Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Mayorial Community Forum. As you can see, this is Women's History Month, and we are excited to be joined by some exceptional women here on this screen. The Mayorial Community Forum seeks to edify and build strength in our communities, but also to grow our network of community leaders. So thank you all so much for joining us and being with us uh, today. We are honored to have with us Ms. Adama Kalokwa, and I hope I have not missed the last name up. Please advise me if I have. But she and I have worked together on several projects uh, relative to the Impact Sierra Leone program. Uh, we also have worked uh, in these streets of the city of Glen Arden relative to taking care of our seniors and being there in as a light, if you will, in the Washington, D.C. area where uh, we have our home there. Uh, where our, our 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 retiree home, if you will. So she has been an absolute uh, joy uh, and a light for me to be able to work with. She is a global goodwill ambassador, and she also has advanced herself as an author, a women empowerment leader, and the founder, as I stated earlier, of Impact Sierra Leone. She was most recently named the most distinguished woman of change makers in Africa for 2020-2021. And she is also a woman change maker when it comes down to excelling in the multitude and the fields of industries of service. Uh, she has moved throughout Sierra Leone uh, in building a former active duty member of the United States Air Force. Woo -woo. She honorably, honorably served, uh, served four years. Uh, as you know, Mayor Cross has given 20. And uh, so she is a sister in arms, a veteran, and a strong advocate for women and girls uh, in Sierra Leone, as well as Seas of Hope is another one of her projects to reach with compassion and feed the world. So we are grateful to have you online with us. Thank you so much for extending your father's legacy and being with us. Thank you. If you want to open up and expound on a little bit more that I, your resume is so diverse. I don't know if I've done it justice. Oh, I am really grateful um, and honored to be amongst some powerful leaders um, and just to be able to be a voice on this beautiful Women's History Month. We're doing it with purpose, and I'm always, always grateful to be amongst great people. Um, again, I'm Dr. Adama Coloco, so you were almost close. <laughs> and um, again, born and raised in D.C., Washington, D.C., to parents who were natives of Sierra Leone, West Africa. So I'm not sure if any of you guys have heard of that country, but it's on the western um, kind of peninsula of, of, of Africa. And I am going to be there on Tuesday of next week, by God's grace, to continue on the mission. And we are going to do some great work with the women farmers so the Seeds of Life program is kind of like our anchor program for Impact Sierra Leone. And it's opening the Recording doors in progress. for us to meet them with agriculture, education, wellness, everything that I love to do, I'm pouring into these women. So I am asking for your prayers and traveling, mer traveling mercies as I go and just do our annual outreach. Uh, we are going to do sip and, sip and paint with the the 40 women farmers. I'm taking new experiences to them and making sure they feel valuable. Um, and we are also going to have a brunch. So next Friday, by God's grace, we're going to have a women's empowerment brunch. Um, we're going to, I'm going to read poetry to them. I'm going to let them talk to me and dial in. Recording stopped. And um, we're going to have a good time. And then we're also having a massive clothing distribution and we're going to give away some plush toys. So that connection, uh, Mayor Cross, um, is definitely strong. Those beautiful plush bears that you gave and, and donated to Impact Sierra Leone were put in a barrel. And we're going to continue telling the story and the journey of impact. So you guys stay tuned for where, you know, the world's world don't just say, where's Adama? Because I'm going to be 
taking you guys to Sierra Leone next week and um, everything you guys have poured into me, everything that we did last year, I'm grateful because if, if not for you guys for even supporting our first in-person gala, all of this could not be possible without us coming together. And so this is what I want to continue as we forge into this Women's History Month. Togetherness is, is the theme for me. So I'm taking your togetherness to the women and the men and the children of Sierra Leone, West Africa. And we're going to have a good time with purpose. So I'm grateful and I can't wait to share and, you know, bring back so much good stories. Um, and we also have an Easter um, empowerment celebration on the 30th. And, um, you know, everything I couldn't do for the Christmas time, I'm bringing it for Easter. So my team, they're all waiting um, with open arms to receive me um, as I'm going by myself. So I'm grateful and we're going to do this, this bridge of an African-American born on the soil of the United States going to be taking that that hope, that inspiration, the motivation, everything I speak about, we're going to take it back to the motherland. Oh, amen. And, and you know, I love how you talk about your heritage. I, I recently, Dr. Adama, I broke on down ancestor.com. You know, yes. I ordered my DNA kit. So uh, as you know, uh, I was born in Mississippi uh, to an educator and a farmer, um, and uh, I am so honored to get my results on the 30th of this month, so oh. I will be able to, you know, adequately to, uh, uh, what do they say, 99.9% .9 say exactly what cloth we're cut from. Uh, um. Our family names, of course, uh, my husband and I from Scotland and England. Uh, but we definitely are excited to see from what heritage we herald in the motherland. So thank you, Dr. Adama is what I call her because my Mississippi tongue sometimes mess stuff up. Uh, but I'm honored also by the work that you do. Um, yeah. Send pictures of the beautiful plush animals. Uh, we are moving the mission forward. We've gone international, y'all. And I'm Absolutely. so honored to know you. So our next guest uh, is Miss Rima on, Miss Rima Kapani. Miss Rima Kapani, if you're able to cut your phone on, we want to make sure we see your beautiful, lovely face. She is a powerhouse behind Echo Dreams Production. This is a true artist in her heart as well as in the community. She has skillfully directed, produced uh, the expertise behind the brilliance of the spectrum of the creative field. Uh, she is also bringing the energy of music. Thank you, Mayor Cross. Thank you so much. Really Thank appreciate you. your kind words. Thank oh, you. Oh, the beauty of just fashion and movies, <laughs> the flair of choreography. She is a yoga dancer. She is a performer. She's an instructor. She's beyond the traditional boundaries, and she has consistently delivered beautiful, captivating, innovative projects. Yeah, she, was there. she is a celebrity. She is like Yes, and her latest one is just a landscape of multimedia arts that she is able to do in and around our communities. And 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 Miss Rima, could you tell us about how you spent COVID nineteen doing something simply amazing, y'all? Over to you, Miss Rima. Yes, I through yoga and pranayam, which is called controlled breathing. I heal so many people. I've spread health awareness and yoga brings a lot of power internal power that way you can keep sickness away you know the funny thing about the inner being we always try and take care of our outer self but our mental self is so equally important and um since joining the ranks of mayors here in maryland and even before, we knew mental health and wellness was going to be one of our top priorities coming out of COVID-19, coming through COVID-19, and going beyond COVID-19. So we have targeted mental health and wellness in our communities. So yoga is a fantastic way. In fact, in many of our high schools, that's one of the, the ways that the, the, the nurses, the nurse practitioners, and the um, 
you know, mental health counselors are actually utilizing to calm students down because we found that there is such a healing benefit relative to the yoga program. The 30 days is your movie that you created. And I thought you were going to go there. Uh, she is an actual producer. She's so humble. She didn't want to tell us, but the 30 days is produced uh, international movie. You know, it's the whole movie of the glitz and the glams of the speed life. And, you know, it talks to the story of love and intrigue and mystique. And it's actually translated in five different languages. So I'm so honored to have uh, Miss Rima on with us as we talk about women breaking the barrier in what has traditionally been male dominated fields. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about the 30 days? Oh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> Mayor Cross and Dr. Crosslin, I'm honored that you guys uh, considered me for this. And I have actually now produced uh, another feature film, which is called Believe It, Miracles Still Happen. Dr. Crosslin is uh, uh, one of the actress in the movie. Um, she's representing herself as Miss Virginia Senior World. She looks beautiful in the movie. And we have made three music videos, yeah. all music video and the movie. Believe It Miracles Still Happen has a beautiful message behind it. Uh, one of the music videos is really close to my heart because it's about uh, crown of the hearts. It's about pageants, how winning the pageant is not just about the outer looks, the physical fitness. Yes, you need all of that also, the beauty, the fashion, but you also need to have a purified soul who's willing to give back to the world do good for mother nature, do good for other fellow human beings, for animals, for, uh, you know, the environment. So be a heart of gold who's willing to give back, be a purified soul. Then yes, the outer looks, the physical fitness, the beauty, the fashion, everything comes, looks so much more beautiful than, than the person inside is the purified soul. Oh my goodness, such wonderful words. I mean, doesn't, isn't she just wonderful? Her whole atmosphere is this way all the time, y'all. And I know you've met someone yeah. that's just, you know, it's an act. This You can't do what Rima does. Rima is amazing. Um, her spirit is so pure and just so humble all the time. We've got several other women like uh, Queen Hereford Richards there, so humble all the time. You Thank two you ladies are our embraced women's history month icons on this i on this line but i do want to make sure that all our other wonderful queens on the line tonight get an opportunity to introduce themselves and we're going to jump right into our session uh let's start with you dr crosland and then we'll just go around the horn yes ma'am thank you so much for this opportunity um to just say yes all these pure hearts joined together as one, it's totally amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know how to work my camera on here, but that's okay. Um, I'm not shy at all, but what I wanna show is a picture of this bo a box. It's a little box with a bow wrapped around it. And it's, um, I got a necklace out of it and it's a magnifying glass so that I don't have to wear my glasses and so that's why I don't like to turn my camera on because I don't because I'll be looking real close into this phone <laughs> you know I'm in my 60s so I, I'm trying to get it all figured out but yes these pure hearts yes yes ma'am are all all one uh Mayor Cross with you being the leader of the pure hearts women's club and uh, because Dr. Adama, she is just so, her heart is just so pure. When I talked to her, at, when I first met her, I did not believe that somebody could be so genuine. And then I even threw some words in there. It didn't even distract her. She just kept on being a pure heart. And with Miss Rima, as as you pointed out, you pointed this out, Mayor Miss Rima and Queen Herfa. You know when you when you, when a person thinks of a woman with a pure heart and a queen, these are the people that they think of. Miss Rima, you know Queen Herfa, 
Taylor Miss Julie. Carolyn Kennedy. And we have someone on here named Queen yeah. McKnight. And her real name is Queen. And she got a pure heart. So I just want to thank everybody for having a pure heart. And then Miss Ringless Friends got pure hearts. I mean, it's just totally amazing and refreshing to be able to say and to call everyone on this call, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Crosland. And then we'll go to Miss Carolyn Kennedy. Hello, everyone. I'm so delighted to have been invited to this. I just really appreciate everyone on this call. I admire you so much, Mayor Cross. I, I could not believe that uh, you're having this wonderful forum this evening. I had to be here. And to be in the presence of Adama, Dr. Adama, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. And Dr. Crossland, you've inspired me so much until I went out and bought me a pair of glitter tennis shoes. <laughs> Without you, I never would have thought of it. <laughs> anyway, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I hail from North Carolina, where I was born and raised. And I now live in Silver Spring, Maryland, in Washington, D.C. I am executive manager where I um, studied uh, at North Carolina Central University where I got my undergraduate degree in sociology and psychology. And I studied at Howard University where I earned a master's degree in social work. And since I've been at Howard, I, would, I have uh, gone back to North Carolina to serve as director of the Department of Social Services, the County Department of Social Service with the multi-million dollar budget. I, I was the first black woman or man to serve in that role in Pamlico County and one of the few in North Carolina as a whole. Uh, I also have founded uh, an organization in, in North Carolina called the Black Arts Culture Center where I brought community um, education and history and art and culture to the, the eastern um, shore of North Carolina and the Piedmont area of North Carolina and Chapel Hill, North Carolina. That was my first adventure with nonprofit management. Mm -hmm. I founded that organization and managed it uh, that's, uh, just before my son was born. <laughs> Right after I graduated from college, and as a result of that, how would you? Know, I got earned a whole year of graduate credit for the work I did there with that organization. Since then, I've been a uh, executive manager of mental health treatment program, and I founded a group home uh, services for disabled children in Maryland that served the children of Maryland and D.C. And for the last 20 years, that's what I have been doing. I recently retired from that. And I'm now uh, organizing nationwide to provide coalitions between leaders who are interested in making a difference and uh, bringing about change in the lives of underserved uh, com and marginalized communities. We have recently developed the National Hope Collaborative, where we have partners in at least 12 states already. And we'll add in and inviting others to join us. If you want to make a difference and bring about change in community and come together to raise the kind of funds that's needed in order to do, do that kind of change work. This is a dream work for me. And I'm so delighted to be a part of it. We have uh, as I say, 12 states that we're working in right now, and it keeps me very busy. And I want you all to take a time and look at the new study that recently came out by the National Urban League on the, um, the status of Black America and the, uh, with regard to disparate treatment in this country. It's mm -hmm. an annual report that the National Urban League does uh, everybody should read it because it gives you all the details of who 
doing what I've been reading and I've discovered that there's 26 states that do not allow expanded Medicaid services to the citizens. And the main reason that those states don't allow it is they don't want to expand services to black citizens. So be conscious, be aware, and get to know what's going on in your neighborhood and in your state. <laughs> Thank Ms. you. Ms. Kennedy, you are a light. I'm serious. Um, all of what you've educated us on is just you know, phenomenal. And we really are having to associate the many crossover lanes, which is one of the things that prompted us to pull this message together to show just how powerful women have been, even in the making of the nation before we were even given credit for it. You know, when the men had to go to war, we came in and ran the industries. We had to figure it all out from the ground up. So the power that is associated in this Women History Month is exposing that work experience, even training, no training, and the exposure in this male-dominated, mostly environments that we're talking about here, associated with what has now become evidence-based programs, like what you spoke about. So thank you for sharing all that great information. Now, Queen McKnight, can we get a little word from you today? Yes, yes. Um, good evening, everyone. I apologize as I'm driving. My camera isn't operable, but I just would like to extend a thank you to especially Dr. Crossland, who is my mentor, and all of the other wonderful ladies on the line. Thank you for all you, you do and the work that you've done to assist and pioneering and trailblazing and lighting the path so the younger generations could come on through and pick up on it and help trek on to the promising land. So I thank each and every one of you and thank you so much, Dr. Crossland, for inviting me to this phenomenal meeting, this empowering meeting. Thank you so much, Queen McKnight. And as she talked about Trek On to the Promised Land, we're talking about our legacies. Uh, many of you know I call my two little ones my little legacies because they are an extension of the prayers of praying grandmothers and grandfathers. And even before that, those that you know laid a solid foundation that we all stand on. And so it is always one of my greatest joys to acknowledge that our youth are the generation to improve, to change, and to make change happen. And relative to that is, you know, something else that you hit on is being a role model and uh, being a mentor and extending ourselves, a little bit of ourselves, for that support to positively cross over and support our young generation to generations. You know, in about three more years, we're going to have seven generations in the workplace. And I always say that, you know, and I give a little chuckle because if you consider uh, 40 years ago coming into, you know, the workforce, now you're about to have someone who's just met legal age of adulthood. And so there is so much in that big window and gap that all of us are going to have to provide some early exposure and training to. That's why these mentor moments are so important. We, uh, Dr. Forgive me, Queen Harfa Richards and I had the opportunity to go and witness the journey of a Newsome Queen, um, which was the second uh, showing for private showing for this new exciting um, message that is essentially delivering on women. And we are so very honored to have got an opportunity to see women who have came through the struggle of abuse, neglect, self-deformation or self-destructive means to regain self-confidence and self-energy. Jennifer Galicia is one of my queens that you know I associate with in the homeless ministry uh, that we serve in and around the DMV. Uh, she frequently can be found there just around the street from the Capitol, feeding and delivering clothing, very much like you, Queen Adama. She also does this for, you know, literally uh, all men and women. And I'm talking, we took some hygiene products over there 
uh, from uh, the uh, ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Queen Denise Richards, can you come on and give us an introduction to your wonderful works, ma'am? Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, I'm a little bit jet lag. I'm just coming back from the 44th annual A-Star Conference in Rhode Island. I have been with the American University Washington College of Law for roughly about 21 years uh, in events. I work in a school at the law school. I love my children. So I'm an advocate in my kids' school for kids that they claim are bad, misunderstood, just special. I'm an underdog. So I go for all my underdogs. Um, doesn't matter what they're going through. There's always someone there for a particular person. There's someone there for me. I have a lot of great mentors out here. And for that, I am grateful. So I give back where I can. Um, I help out in the churches. I help out in the schools. I'm helping in the community. I am with two pageantry. I'm with the Royal Crown Production and I'm with the Perfect Family. So we're perfectly royal, international family. And um, my queens, I tell them that they are amazing. I have an actual stu um, queen that is, she has a disability, but her disability makes her beautiful. And she hits that runway and I invite them to a lot of our forums and a lot of our, they'll be here at the East Asia. 30th here in Glen Arden Community Center. I work a lot in the community. I'm a dance mom. I'm a pageant mom. I'm a dancer. I'm a model. I'm a mentor. And um, I just want my kids to know that they can do anything. They can do all things through Christ that gives them strength. Um, my biggest thing is to keep shining no matter what you're going through. My biggest thing is Matthew 5, 16. Let smile with the world. Let the world smile with you. Okay. I am a great thing for teaching our children. Proverbs 22, 6, train them up as the way that they should grow. Whatever I'm asked of, if it's beneficial for the youth and my silver bells, I don't want to leave out my silver bells. They're not old. They're my silver bells. They're my veterans. They're who raised me so that I can train the ones behind me. So I'm just here for the community. So thank you, Mayor, for all that you do. Dr. Crossland, I wouldn't be here if you didn't pull me off of a runway. So I'm grateful for that. And for the rest of the Queens, thank you for all that you do. Adama, I had a pleasure working with you and I can't wait to work with you again. Miss Carolyn Kennedy, I love you. Miss Rima, I love you too. <laughs> I am just grateful to be in the presence of some wonderful women. And I thank you for the opportunity to be here. Me across your own mute. Thank you, Queen Richards. We're so excited. Honestly, um, I'm the third female mayor in the city of Glen Arden at the time elected in its 82 year history. So that gives you kind of an indication of you know how far we've come and how far we've grown when it comes down to women leading the way. Uh, in 2018, just for you know political uh, interesting things. Um, we had 102 women who were elected to the House of Representatives. However, that was still represented less than 25% of the total number of elected officials in the chamber, less than 25%. And so we are looking forward to how we are changing in this most predominantly uh, male respected environment, even in policy making in that, you know, it really is one that eludes not only the careful consideration that women bring, but the mixed, unbiased, generational, undeterred, unpersuade tenacity that women bring. So when I want to bring us into our guest here today, Queen Adama, I've seen you do a lot of checks and balances relative to the various organizations. How have you seen your roles evolve uh, from your initial onset of being a community and an international servant? Yeah, so I would say, I'm hoping that you all can hear me. 
Um, networking is our superpower. I didn't realize it in the beginning. You know, you have this mindset. Sometimes you you want to be comfortable. You want to be in a safe space. You want to be with familiar territory. Um, for me, that was mostly my African my African people, my uncles, my aunts. You know, people who cheered me on, and I knew would cheer me on. But once you step out of that box and you enter into a, a larger realm of network, you know your communication. Your, your presentation, you know, that's one thing that is some of it self-taught, but a lot of it is just soaking in from different people. And I had to decide where do I want to go with this? How far in the nonprofit sector do I want to go? And um, again, I, I actually uh, went to Sierra Leone for the very first time in 2003. And everyone always poured into me and said, you know, you need to do something because you're just always serving. I always collected clothes. I was always involving my church because they always wanted to give back to Africa, but they didn't know how. But I shied away from starting my own because I just did not want the responsibility. I didn't want the fear of maybe not making it, you know, just those voices. And so, um, you know, it's just at the end of the day, um, you have to see it. You have to see the end that I do want to reach people in Sierra Leone and everywhere. It's not just limiting to Sierra Leone. I do want to be able to, you know, have the resources that I can be able to reach, you know. And so if I wanted to do it alone, you know, yes, I could still make an impact. But when you do it with others, you go so much further. And I think that once I, I always tell people there's power in our voice, there's power in when we hear that voice, when we discover that this is what I was designed to do, you take off. And I always tell myself, I'm a black butterfly. My wings, when I got my wings, um, I didn't, I, I'm still soaring. I'm still soaring. And so I, and I went from just talking to the comfortable people that I knew loved me and would just cheer me on anyway to now any nationality. Um, I'm sitting at the table and reaching different people. I'm connecting with people um, in spaces that I'm just like, why? How did I get here? Because people are interested when you have something to say and you're passionate about it and you stand for it and you show evidence. You know, as the Bible says, show yourself approved. I took everything that I could, my energy, into telling the story of all what I was doing. I think that makes a difference in your voice going beyond. So I, I hope I answered that question, but I, I now am not shy from that elevator pitch from the white top executive to the custodian. And, and it, it's a wonderful feeling. And you know what? That is exactly spot on. The largest identified cause in gender gaps is wage and occupations and industries. And you've talked about really what really hurts us the most is our own mouth. You know, out of the mouth come blessings and curses. So when you say you can't, that is a curse. You've already told yourself you're not gonna. And I love Joel Osteen in the morning as I'm driving in I BW Parkway. And yes. hi, Miss Weish, how you doing, Miss Linda? And, and, you know, one of the things that has always aggregated in my head is you are as you speak, you are. Yes. And so I remember my mom would always say, you haven't yet. You have, but you, you haven't, but you will. And you know, always put the obligatory, I can do all things as Queen Richards was reminding us. By the way, the third annual distinguished lecture on African studies will happen in your excellency, uh, Dr. Julius Abayo, the president oh. of the Republic of Sierra Leone will be at uh, the Perry World House. Uh, so we are looking forward to maybe getting over to Philadelphia to see uh, His okay. Excellency, uh, he's talking about some of the democracy, progressive politics, and inclusive development in Africa, that whole Sierra Leone experience that you introduced us to. See, mm. we're bridging the gap by just understanding, you know, the cycles of life that you've gone through. You had another wonderful point. You have not because you ask not. Yes. You have to get in there and you got to stay at the table. You know, um, India Ari had a song and she would always say in the song, it was one of my favorite pieces of the line, I don't need your silicone, I bought my own. You know, yes. I love it when you have that self-empowerment that, you know, there is no gap where there is hope and faith. Yes. And now, Miss Rima, 
I know you talked a little bit earlier about bringing out your inner uh, spirit, allowing the soul of you to actually drive, you know, that full consciousness to achieving greater. Uh, are you able to un unlock your computer there and give us just kind of like a, a little bit of your heartbeat? I know Doc, Miss Rima may be involved in a session. It sounds like she might've been in session. Miss Linda, you heard my, is she on that? Okay, I see you Queen McKnight. You wanna take an answer? Go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted to wait for the proper opportunity. I heard you mention the wage and hour division and how there is a fight for women um, across the globe. I didn't have the opportunity to introduce myself and um, why I was brought on to this wonderful, amazing call tonight. But my name is Miss Queen McKnight. I am the CEO and founder of Queen's Energy Conservation, LLC. We are a full service general contracting firm that's certified with the district and federally registered to work across the United States. We're seeking to go global as well. Um, we actually, we're full service. So we're everything from consulting about your vision and planning on how we can increase energy conservation and global sustainability, all the way to giving back to the community through STEM programs. We've adopted a couple of blocks in DC. We're seeking to you know, adopt blocks in other areas as well. But I just, again, I appreciate being on the call tonight. I'm definitely looking forward to figuring out how we can work together to bring the world in a forward direction. As the sister mentioned, we go further together than alone. That's one of my main things that I preach to everyone. I am a, also a member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. I do political work for the local union. Um, and I definitely stand strong for my brethren. I stand strong for the community, for the global community. So again, thank everyone. And I'm gonna go back on you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Queen McKnight. Uh, while you were speaking, I did want to clarify some discrimination relative to the large cause for that gender wage gap that I spoke of earlier. Just since fiscal year 2022, the Department of Labor's Office of Federal Contract and Compliance Programs and the Equality Employment Opportunity Commission and Department of Justice have collectively recovered over 20 million in monetary relief for women who have experienced pay discrimination in the workplace. So I just wanted to go on record with those statistics because I want to just say, you know, since the women's suffrage movement, since Ruth Gaindridge and some of the other powerhouses that we've had that have pulled us in all the right directions, the Harriet Tubmans and such that have helped bring, you know, cultural diversity and equity to the forefront, refusing to get off of the bus, you know, all these things that have shown women strong and powerful. I just want to acknowledge that since 2022, that there has been change action happening on behalf of the labor uh, unions as such, uh, the labor uh, compliance programs. So I thought 20 million in monetary relief, you know, is a wonderful start. Uh, black women in 2023 uh, lost about 42.7 billion. Hispanic women lost 53.3 billion in wages as compared to some of our uh, Caucasian males due to the impact of occupational segregation. So what we're here to talk about and the work that we're putting on the ground is really impactful in that we are no less for the same occupation than any average person. And as we look at Women History Month, we're looking at how women have fought through just the pay gap. Uh, and also as Queen Autumn brought us into the realization that even that self image, um, it's becoming a, had become an impact. But I'm honored to say through mentorship, like we talked about with Queen Harfa, that we are bringing a consistency in growth. And that's what these forums are about. Yes, it doesn't and matter where you're in, it's how you get there. And you need a consistency in growth and allowing ourselves to display and use the skills and the talents that God gave us. Yes, uh, Dr. Crosley. Yes, ma'am. And, and Mayor, 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, you were mentioning uh, the EEOC and the DOL, Department of Labor, and I placed it in the chat, uh, a picture of Miss Queen McKnight. She's going to be a speaker at the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and Department of Labor stakeholder meeting, the conversation uh, with women leaders in construction. And you can see how beautiful she is for her, her picture that's in the chat. Um, and I'm going to ask you, Mayor, if you would be her mentor uh, because you just gave her statistics and I and she's going to be speaking and I think she's going to need you uh, and, and the statistics and everything that I, I think you just need to talk with her and, and take her under your wing. I think she could use your help, Mayor. Well, thank you, Dr. Croson. You know, we got a lot of um, modern, you know, ideologies that are out there and the environments haven't really changed. The houses and the corporate boards haven't really changed. But what has changed, unfortunately, is the anxiety. You know, and this anxiety is, is crippling us as we look at our community. So, yeah, the importance of mentors is changing the dynamics of the negative emotions. And yeah, momentarily, we're going to be stepping out from a problem and looking at how we resource and rethink the problem and turn it around to uh, something that's good and edifying for the soul. And when I say the soul, that's for the whole, whole of community. We fight hard. As Queen Harford said, we go hard in all the right directions for our community. I see you, uh, Miss Linda. Welcome to you, Queen. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you so much for um, invite, for, uh, allowing me to be here. I am Linda White. I am an educator. I came out of corporate into uh, public education and uh, continue to work in that area. However, I am transitioning what I want, what my focus is, will be is on uh, being an advocate for parents who have uh, students who have special needs. I, I am driving, so I'm not going to stay off for long, but I am so excited about the conversations, about the wonderful things women are doing, and they continue to do, even in the state that, that we're in as far as equity, uh, equality and equity. And I just um, wanted to say that, and I... Uh, Thankful to be here. Thank you so much, Ms. Weish. And we do appreciate you. I saw Queen Harper said we need to talk uh, relative to the work that you're doing with edifying our children and advocating for our children with special needs. And I will just say this. Uh, we and the, a lot of ladies on this line have been in this journey with me as we talked about our needs communities, our hidden disabilities communities. And I just want to go on record and say City Bill 1096 was pushed out um, this past a, a week and a half ago now. We talked to Eric's law, and this law is going to uh, request that the state of Maryland, throughout the state, put a provision in place where folks with hidden disabilities, PTSD, and um, over anxiety issues, depression, um, um, you know, uh, autism can actually have a code put on their driver's license or a picture. So when their license is looked at, it automatically shows, hey, this is a person who suffers from PTSD, bipolarism, depression, or has, you know, any other significant hidden disability, a, a type two diabetes, you know, if you find you're in a diabetic coma, you might know how to result, you know, resuscitate. So these are things that this law is doing. He's an 18 year old, fully functioning autistic uh, child of Miss Linda Grantham. And I'm gonna tell you, Miss Linda has ensured that his disability did not disable him. And that's the power of a mother that works and pushes. I'm talking wind beneath your wings, push. And it doesn't matter. Don't be fooled by the imposter syndrome. You know, as I look at all these beautiful women on this line and the words that have come forth, it's just so edifying. We fall victim to the imposter. You know, they say the great um, accuser will have you finding yourself in a place where you questioning, you know, the strength and the worst that you have. And yeah, you're that talented. Don't be fooled by anyone. You are as you think you are. 
And that's okay. You know, there's something that has to be said for our women today to say, you're not an imposter. You're striving. You're fighting to do all the things necessary. When Ms. Rima picked up being a director during COVID-19, uh, she didn't have those skills. She reached out and created a mentor set that helped her to be quite successful in that work, despite all the perceived you know, fraudulent thoughts that may have hit everyone else. I can tell you, self-doubt wasn't a part of that struggle. Ms. Rima, I see you back. Welcome. Yeah. So I, I was listening to you. Mayor Cross, I love you. You are just amazing. Dr. Crossland, love you. You guys are amazing, strong women doing such great work. Uh, you guys are the leaders and we are extremely blessed to have you. Thank you so much. The community, this world is extremely blessed to have leaders like you uh, with that, your vision and your knowledge and your guidance to the women, to uh, everyone is just amazing. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Queen Adama, we talked about this whole helplessness too um, and many you know, negative emotions as we've worked with our uh, seniors and community uh, programs where there is this learned hopelessness. Yeah. Now, what, what's your advice to kind of bust that mold, particularly when it comes down to women? Uh, consistency. I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you that, um, you know, everyone will tell you when I walk into a room, I try to be the light. That's like one of my favorite things. And sometimes you have to work a little harder. And when I actually went into this particular community that we adopted, it's a rural community in Sierra Leone, lack of basic resources, no running water. Um, life is hard. They're surrounded by hardship. And so you can imagine me coming there trying to bring them hope and light. Uh, and, and initially was not, um, I didn't get a lot of smiles. I, I, I got a lot of wondering, like, why are you here? Um, because I was made to understand that a lot of people do come visit villages and not necessarily stay to impact, but just kind of, you know, stop and drop. But I decided I am, I want to really be the light. And I was determined that when I finish here, I'm not going to another community until the job is done. And I can tell you that when I first started with the women, and I want to shout out that we created a specific farm project for the women because I gave them a mic, I visited them, and I said, what do you want to see in this community for the women? And first of all, they were like, probably taken aback that someone gave them a mic to speak because it is a male dominated society. It's just the way that the culture is. And so without disrespecting the culture, I asked them, you know, is it okay if we create a farm group for these women? And fast forward to two years later, the women, you can see some of the videos, they are rejoicing when it's harvest time, they are clapping, they're singing. They do videos to me on WhatsApp. That's how we communicate to say, thank you for caring for us in their language. Thank you, our daughter. You know, you are helping us. The voices, I can tell you, you know, you speaking to people enough It'll come around. It takes time. But if you speak into people, I make the 80, 85% illiteracy. So I do create posters specifically so that they see those bright pictures and it gives them a chance to voice and speak. And they they love it. And so that's uh that's just something that I, I've always been conditioned to speak. And um there's one particular poster before I end that I made for the the women and girls and for the boys. And it says, I am bold, I'm brilliant, I'm brave, and I am I think it's um black, I think it's something like that. And um there's power in words. So it it takes time, but I, I tell you, it doesn't matter that we can't speak the same language at the end of the day. Um, they're gonna feel they feel valuable when you show your genuine care for them and that you let them know that we're not here to change you. You're a change agents without me. And I they love it. They love knowing that they also are part of the change in their community. Come on, here, here, sister. That's what we're talking about. Empower him, empower her. Miss Olivia Kofa is uh uh, is Kofi is a young lady that I met with the Empower Her program, and she was like, "Why well, won't you bring your daughters? Won't you?" Bring... Let me tell you, I've never seen such growth and empowerment and strength imparted into young ladies, and that's why I love the journey of a newsome woman. We're empowering the young 
ladies, and it starts at a young age. Um, when you talk about um, you, you own it. You can do it. It's up to you. We have the the victory. We have the the power to do things. The sense of empowerment translates into the acknowledgement of strength, you know, and that is what breaks a learned helplessness to carry the future. You carry the future. Women carry the future, right? I see you come online there, Miss Rima. I'm sorry, I was mute. I was saying that I didn't want to disturb you. I'm listening to everything you're saying. You're giving us so much power, so much energy. Love you, Mayor. We love you. <laughs> but we have to. And then the, 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 uh, the same idea translates, you know, whether we're in the workplace or in our communities at church, whether we are doing uh, cultural diversity programs or whether we're just caring for nature. You know, it is that sense of owning and thriving and connecting. Women, we are asking for us to drive in a harder direction and connecting, rethinking it, because we are stronger when we, as a voice, can be heard. And that is something very key. I see you come offline there, Queen Richards. You said something earlier that I learned at the ASTAR 44th annual conference that I was at this past weekend. You, um, in each of our departments, everyone is so different. Sometimes I feel like I don't belong. I'm the spunky one. It's like, I'm playing around. I'm having fun. And everyone's so A, B, C, D. But sometimes you need that other person to get what you don't have or to give you strength in what you don't have. It's not a weakness. It's just someone is stronger in a different area than you. So we have to nurture those areas. And we push them to where they're nurtured at. So if I know someone over here can do something, I'm not going to put them over here with something they can't do. I'm going to nurture them over here so that they can grow. And I will continue to do what I need to do on the other side. That's how you build your team. Everyone has something different to bring to the plate. So thank you, Mayor Cross. We're no, here thank you for bringing that fidelity to that discussion. And when you were speaking, you know what came to my mind? Unpacking the status level, unpacking it. Because we get so busy living in a cultural society, particularly where, you know, we are taught layer, 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 layer. And so you're always in this up, 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 up. When their truth is, most of the times we're a little bit like this all the time. And that doesn't mean this person's above you in this area all the time. No, that could mean education level. That could be time and when they came into service. It could have nothing to do with you at all, but we are taught this status leveling. And that is a burden on growth of our women mindset, and particularly in a male-dominated occupation environment like we've talked about some of them here. You've heard from, you know, Miss Carolyn Kennedy, how she's standing up organizations literally you know, across 12 states out of the 50, I mean, honestly, the pressure point that you must feel when you think about a surgeon or you think about an engineer, I was, you know, set to become a civil engineer until I found out I didn't like calculus. I just don't like it. <laughs> so, you know, policy is where I found my love because obviously my mouthpiece God gave me creative communication as my God-given gift as well as my talent. But, you know, the demography that we have suggests that there are avenues where we as women can craft and create those intersections for gender and occupational strength and leveling that playing field, particularly in the workplace. I was a part of a class, it's called Deal Me In. And this class taught us how you don't have to have a title, you don't have to be in the front, but you can leave right from where you are. And if we all learn that message, then therefore there are no eyes in team, but there is a me, right? And there is always an opportunity for us to be treated as equals and we should hold ourselves in high esteem and be phenomenal. And this level status, level burden, we need to dump that. 
because um, if you want to be at this level and you're right here, figure out what the difference is in normal to playing field, you know, and that's called work and invest in you. That's the key. Dr. Adama, I see you maybe want to come in and say something on this particular topic. Yeah, I wanted to kind of piggyback to uh, what uh, Queen um, Herfa um, mentioned about just our strengths. And I always go back to a book that I read, The Strengths Finder 2.0. Um, I don't know if you guys have, have come across that, but it basically says that there, everyone has a strength. Uh, we're all different crayons in a box. I always use that in illustrating to my kids. We're all you know, crayons in a box. And guess what? We all color with different colors, with different strokes. And it's something that I've applied to working with um, a community, you know, who may not have the same education level, um, the same literacy level. And, you know, when you're working with, you know, people of different um, backgrounds, that's the mindset you have to have that I'm going to pull out the best. I always say pull out the best in you because there is always something within us. And that strength, what you know you were talking that we're all capable you know and even if this person's you know ability it could complement you know so I, I i like to say that because we live in a society where we're comparing social media compares and it's something that um our youth our youth experience in school the level of just competition is so crippling um, and, and sometimes it cripples the gifts that that's still trying to come out. And I just wanted to really, you know, say that because as, as women, you know, we're naturally going to compare ourselves. That's just a natural trait that we have. So we have to fight it. Even on the in a call, we have to fight to continue to, you know, find that we all have a strength. We all have an ability to soar. We all have ability to be at the table, at the table. And 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 give what we can, and so that's that's what I was just thinking about because I um I have to constantly pour that into the the women and the the, the communities that I serve, and even our team, my team members, to make sure that um you know if they're not doing something, I I keep pulling out until I get that strength. And then I wanted to also mention that I am uh, one of the futuristic goals we do have is to bring yoga. <laughs> uh, so it's just fitting that um I would love to connect with um the the I'm sorry. My, my brain has got so much going on, but um, that's actually Miss uh, Rima, uh, because uh, mental health is um, is a huge uh, issue. It's 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 not as spoken because the resources are just not there, and it's a, a taboo for anyone in the culture to to know that you have a mental illness. So it's not really spoken of. But um, that's something that I, I do want to bring with the forty women. Um, is a uh, is, is eventually we are um, we did we are doing a vocational training center. So by that's one of the things I'm going to. But we um, they. Um, like to relax and so i i want to really you know connect because that's something i can envision us doing is bringing yoga to the village um to help them with their mind because these are farmer women that are working all day in the farm and uh, i spent a day a half a day in the farm and i'm like yes y'all y'all need all the you know it's it's a lot of work to do so i just wanted to say i'm grateful to be amongst this kind of connection because we can give into pour into each other you know oh dr Adamo, i grew up on an 80 acre farm farm work is a treat <laughs> we all love to eat we don't like the yeah. harvest yeah. oh listen ladies we have met our time miss rima please give us some closing words and you know i don't even know if i introduced myself i've, I've been doing it a lot lately you know because it's not me is it so I'm Mayor Kashina A. Cross. My motto, as you know, we're moving the mission forward. We are exploring this relationship uh, of the women in the male-dominated space and how we are aggregating the dimensions of change associated with this theoretical framework of less, and we are turning it into being and becoming and exuding our best. So Miss Rima, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor Cross. Love you. Yes, moving the mission forward. You're absolutely right. Us women are so strong, but yes, you're right. The, the males try to dominate us. I have felt it so much now being in this industry uh, that I sometimes, you know, I I get, I get, I, I start, I cry. I, I get teary eyes. Like how uh, these people, like, you know, they feel that they can dominate us. But guess what? I don't give up. I'm moving the mission forward. I'm, I'm, I am, 
you know, in this male dominated industry of because I'm producing and directing feature films and all that, I men are all around me trying to, you know, put me down, but I don't get de- I don't let them put me down. I stay and powerful. You're fine. Stay yeah, strong. too. <laughs> uh, say it again. I'm sorry. You're fighting artificial intelligence too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> fighting artificial intelligence too. So staying strong, uh, working hard, um, helping the world, helping other people in whichever capacity I can. Um, you know, I'm I'm I am blessed to have Mayor Cross and Dr. Cross Lynn with me. My sisters uh, who love me so much always encourage me, and uh, I keep trying to do the to the good work with strength and uh, be ready for the premiere, the three music videos and movie, um, you know, Dr. Cross Lynn, Mayor Cross, without your support, I couldn't have done it. Um, and the, all the love you shower off on, on me. So please be, be prepared, be ready. It's coming up, the, just finalizing the theater very soon. All the products are ready. Um, very excited. I need you guys to be my, you know, again, celebrity guest. <laughs> And we will be there for you. So all of my beautiful queens on this line, thank you so much for sharing. Oh my God, Miss Sullivan, I saw you come in. We're right at time, ma'am, but I just want to acknowledge you, Miss Mary. Listen, we're going to continue to build our professional efficiencies. We're going to continue to collaborate and connect in cooperation, positive cooperation, working efficiently. We are avoiding negative increase negative demands on our mental health and wellness. Uh, We have no time. Too blessed to be stressed. We are managing our time demands and we are managing those emotional demands because we are referencing that enemy, which is we're not enough. We are enough. We work positively to diminish those levels of coding that we have been given. And that's the beauty of sisters coming together and talking through those things that are emerging themes in our 21st, 22nd century as we face a new generation coming ahead. We will be the change we hope to see in the world. Ladies, thank you so much. I'm Mayor Kashina A. Cross. I love all of you. This has been the March Mayoral Community Forum. Happy International Women's Day, Women's History Month. We are honored to have all of you online. And thank you to the city of Glen Arden. Have a good night. Good thank night. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good morning. Good night. Thank you all and good night. Bye. Thank you.